Good afternoon, and welcome once again to my chat. This is episode number 922, and the topic today we talk about is holiday stress. Um, stress happens all, right, all year round, but this, this time of year especially stress can show up. So I want to talk to you about how maybe you find yourself in that place, and some ways you can get out of it in a way that is effective and especially supportive of yourself and other people. Before all of that, I'm going to shoot. Yeah, <laughs> try to put five words through at once and like no it wasn't clear let's say it again before I do all that let me introduce myself clearly so you <laughs> so you know what I'm about and why I do these talks uh, my name is Barry so in case you already figured that out I'm an inspirational speaker spiritual guide love and relationships expert and also the best-selling book 50 ways to love your lover a book for singles and couples men and women about healthy relationships on all levels um, I help women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. Um, a friend of mine called me a a women's empowerment co uh, women's empowerment expert, something like that. That's what they called me. I'm not, I'm not calling it myself. Just that's what they said. But I am passionate about the divine feminine. That's my that's my passion and why I do what I what I do. And also, what started these talks just over three years ago now, because my first broadcast showed up in my feed from three years ago yesterday. So. Um, it started out and they're called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart and today we're at episode number 922, yes, a lot of them. And I'll tell you at the back end where you find the replays um, in different places because you might want to look at them in different places. Um, as well as probably put some links in the comments once I've finished. I think there's a few brewing, we'll see what happens in the talk. So today we're talking about holiday stress. And in particular, the way that we feel um, caught up by things. And there's a lot of play here. Part of it is this um, sense that we don't have a handle on everything, like we can't control it, it's gonna get too crazy out there and we're gonna feel very, um, it's almost like we're caught in the middle of a, um, do you have dodgems? Bumper cars, that's the word over here. In England we're called dodgems. I th yeah, and over here it's bumper cars. But basically the idea of being in the middle of everything, it banged around, pushed around. Actually, maybe a gentleman was putting it, it's like imagine you're being a, being a, um, a billiard ball on a billiard table, being knocked around by the cue ball. And it can feel that way for a lot of times during the holiday season because so much stuff is going on around that seems to be overwhelming. And we get caught up in this sense of overwhelm, which always, this word always puzzles me. <laughs> if you can be overwhelmed and you can be underwhelmed, can you be whelmed? <laughs> Excuse me. That just, that just framing, so there's no such word as whelming as far as I know. You can be underwhelmed and overwhelmed, but not whelmed. Go figure. Anyway. That was totally off track, let me get back on track. But the sense that we are in this this journey of never getting our way through the world, and especially nowadays with all the technology at our fingertips and all the craziness in our commercial um, retail experience over this time of the year, can be very stressful. And especially if you're now adding on top of that layer, dealing with family members or children or spouses or mates, partners, whatever, it can get a little bit overwhelming. And that stress can get in the way of you having, well, having more enjoyment of life, certainly. But it can also be in a place where you find yourself not able to handle things. And when you don't know how to handle things, you can tend to be, um, I want to say, less than, less than functional. Let's say, I want to say dysfunctional, but less than functional in all your relationships. Basically, when you get overwhelmed and stressed and life gets on top of you, so to speak, the ability for you to handle any challenge in relationships becomes impossible. And you'll find yourself becoming very short, tempered, very argumentative, defensive perhaps, judgmental, resentful, all these different things about all your relationships which don't deserve that. And you don't deserve to be fear either. But the stress creates that result because we're not feeling ourselves in a space in a place of spaciousness. And that's one of the clues, by the way. So there's various ways that you can be and function which give you back your freedom and give you back your, your ability to be unstressed. Before I get to that, another couple of instances. I need to, I need to really pad, I need to lay it on thick, <laughs> let's put it that way, to give you a real sense of what it's like, because this is not the easiest time of year to be around. It, now, let's make it another, let's look at, like, take another spin. It's the holiday season, because Thanksgiving already happened, Christmas is coming, so you're in the holiday season, and you're single. And you're gonna go home and see family at Christmas. Or you just got back from seeing family at Thanksgiving, and you've had a lot of, um, questioning looks and comments made to you at the dining table or will have about why you're still single now i have no idea what that's like 
I do know what it's like, just to be clear, that it's gotten out of hand. And so there's a temptation to start feeling defensive and almost resentful about the fact you're being asked these questions. So this one, I would suggest one very simple thing, is are you single because you choose to be? And if so, what is your reason for choosing to be single? Because there is a reason if you're choosing to it. On the other side of the coin, if you're choosing that you want to be in a relationship, that may be a big hint that you want to get moving on it, like finding someone to be with, because it can both either way. So that's two, th that's two aspects on that one. But the overarching thing I want to get back to, which I started with, is about the idea of being in, or the, or the challenge of being stressed in this situation. Just the traffic that builds up if you're in, in a colder climate, because I do live in California, so we don't get the same sort of weather. But if you're in a colder climate where it's snowing all the time and life is challenging, it can feel like life is really not easy to deal with during the holiday months, or holiday time rather. So what can you do about it? As I mentioned, it's tempting sometimes to feel like you're a victim to what's happening around you, and I understand that. That can happen a lot of times, but especially around this time of year, with so much external that seems to be bigger and more, um, well, I'll say distracting, but it's just more impactful, can make you feel like you're being knocked out of whack. The first thing, well, first two things, I'm gonna give you a one-two one punch. First of all, is become aware of this. Now, I've talked about awareness many times before, but one thing we don't talk about is, we get so stressed and bent out of shape because we're not willing to, st to be um, present to awareness to go, whoa, hang on a second that's not real because it isn't real we get caught up in this mental cyclone of craziness because of what we fall victim to without realizing it when we become aware we step off that um, hamster wheel of craziness and by stepping off we get to be clear and free in the moment the second piece is to realize that you have autonomy so it's a two one two punch because as soon as you become aware that you don't need to do it, you become autonomous. So it is kind of a double benefit right there. So you become you become aware of your autonomy and you stand in your own truth going, oh, hang on a second, that's not necessary for me to get stressed and bent out of shape. So first of all, you sort of put the brakes on the experience of being caught up in the Ferris wheel or the hamster wheel or whatever we want to call it, of discomfort, stress and control from outside. By taking control back to your inside, by putting control back in here, you become free to participate in the world in a different way. Now, one of the things that happens during this time of year is we start to become, um, I'll say judgmental is not necessarily the word, it's more about being knocked out of whack. We don't feel aligned to ourselves and we lose patience. Now, if you're around the holiday season, you've lost patience with anybody, whether it's family members or strangers on the street, you know this one. Being impatient is another indication that you're not taking, taking your space back. And it is about taking your space back and it gives you freedom. The freedom we think we lose is because we get so overwhelmed by what's happening around us, we feel like we need to respond, react, do something all the, all the time, like bang, 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 all the time, having to hammer home things we need to do when we don't have to do any of it. Taking the time to say, you know, no, hang on a second, I'm going to I'm tying like 17 talks together in once they're all dropping in. Okay. One of these things, one of the pieces of this puzzle is that we have an assumption about agreements we didn't make. I've done a talk, I did a talk a few months ago about keeping agreements, a powerful teaching about how to uh, take ownership of your word. But what happens around the holidays is we uh, make assumptions about agreements we didn't make that we have to keep, which is really messed up. If you didn't make the agreements in the first place, you don't need to keep them because they're not yours to keep. But somebody may have laid them on you. Maybe you were told by, a, by people at work you need to show up at a holiday party. Or maybe it's family members wanting to have you come to their event or friends or something else. Unless you said yes, unless you overtly, intentionally said yes to that, there's no agreement in place for you to, to maintain. So you can let step free of that easily. So as I've talked before, again, about agreements and, and keeping your word is important with agreements. But if you haven't made your commitment to something, that wasn't a word you gave. You can say no. In fact, you can simply not show up, be clear on it, and not feel guilty or feel like they can, that they can judge you because you didn't agree in the first place. These are simple tools, but just being present and aware, as I said earlier, gives you a lot of ability to witness, um, to be an observer in a way of the craziness of life. That's one of the things that I've learned a lot over the last few years is learn how to be an observer in my observer consciousness or presence because then I get to witness what's going on and then choose to respond versus being triggered and reactive all the time. 
the power of that comes from different places. One of those, as I mentioned many times before, is learning how to trust myself. And part of that comes from self-love, self-support, and self-reliance. Um, Having an ability to trust and rely on who I am means I don't tend to react as easily to outside stimuli. I still react, just to be clear, I'm not perfect at this, I'm still working on it, but I've done enough of the work over the years to learn how to be responsive versus reactive. It's a powerful tool to use to shift from what's not working to what is working, but it does require you taking some steps to detach from the way the world treats you, because you don't want to be treated the way that you don't want to be treated. It sounds simplistic, but that's really what we do. A lot of, a lot of us in our lives, and I've done it before in my pre in previous careers and other relationships, where I wasn't treated the way I wanted to be treated, and I put up with it. I felt like I had to stay there. Didn't have to, but I thought I did. So you may be in the same boat where you've had that experience where you stay in places, whether it's in a job you don't want to be in or it's an environment you need to go through where you put up with certain things because you think you have to. And 90% of the time, you don't have to. So step clear and take back your ability to witness and see what's going on and then go, you know what, I'm going to do this, not that. Or I'm going I'm to step back and watch and go, that's interesting, it's nothing to do with me, I'll do something else. It's the ability to have volition and intention about your own life. And especially as we go into the new decade coming up in less than four weeks, it's a powerful time to look at what it is you want to have dominion over, what do you have intention about, and what do you want to create as your new reality. This is a interesting time of year, period, which is the holidays at the end of the year, because we're coming down to the end of the year, which is very significant for so many people. You know, New, new Year's Eve, New Year's resolutions, and I have to get to that next year. I may talk about it this month, we'll see. But also wrapping up the year in a certain way of proving success or something like that. My suggestion to you, if you don't have like a lot of, lot of deadlines ending, completing, and everything going together perfectly, because most of us don't, is to really be gentle in this process with yourself. And yeah, it's nice to be gentle with other people too, but it starts to be gentle with yourself. So when you're in the clutches, <laughs> interesting way to put it, of the end of year stress, you can simply go, you know what, that's not my stress, I'm letting it go. And it is almost that simple. It does require um, practice, like doing it more than once, because it's not always a thing we're gonna go one time, it's gonna be fine, and it's never gonna change, after, it's never gonna go back after that. It tends to show up again. I have definitely had much practice with this one because I've had lots of opportunities to repeat the experience of stepping free. So it's definitely something to work on, and someone to work with. And for me, what's become more and more clear is how, for all of us, the opportunity and the requirement to own our space, to have autonomy, is vital. There's so much, um, I don't want to say propaganda, there's so much messaging in the world around us, online, in in person, retail, billboards, everything else, that keeps trying to imp impact us with a way of thinking that we should be a certain way. And I am adamant, yes, I'm adamant, that we have freedom to choose every moment of the day. So understanding how you take care of yourself and really respect your own space is the way to be free. And again, being able to be an observer or witness of what's happening gives you the ability to choose what you want to act upon during the holiday season. And again, this is the way you can set up your new year for 2020, a whole new paradigm. Because if you didn't go through this last year this way, this is a chance to change the paradigm if you didn't start the way, year the way you wanted. To so really step into a place of understanding that you have the freedom to choose what you want. Freedom to choose how you want to interact and also who you want to be around. I, I can say for this myself, I've said goodbye to friendships, either intentionally or accident <laughs> accidentally in a couple of cases where I knew that wasn't going to work anymore. And that's totally because that was what I decided to do for myself, to take care of myself. You have the opportunity to do the same thing too. Um, I'm giving you lots of different pieces because there's a lot to unpack here, but I want to give you some, I'm not sure, I, and to be honest, I'm not sure I'm able to summarize this, we'll see. But I want to make sure you get this point clearly about your own journey through the next few weeks and into the new year, is that everything happens in the next few weeks and into the new year None of it has control over you. Yes, time does march on. Yes, we will be in a new year. But in terms of the experience of the new year and what happens and what, and what people um, present to you as the way things should be, 
is nothing you have to say yes to automatically. This is the time of year to be free to choose what you want. This is the time of year, if like any part of the year, but especially this time of year, to choose to be more gentle with yourself, to choose to be more respectful for yourself, and to choose to make sure that you don't get dis um, that's what we're looking for. Uh, judgment, no, just wrong word. But we basically take care of yourself. So, you, so oh, here we go. <laughs> it shows up this way. It's also a good time to choose to choose to be out of situations you don't want to be in anymore. It, if one way, one thing I recommend for the end of the year is to close the books on certain chats, close the chat, close the books on certain stories you don't want to be part of anymore. It's a powerful place to be when you can do that because you can. Yes, you can do that now. <laughs> um, Is there anything else? I'm going to leave it there because there's a lot more to talk about, but I've got <laughs> I've got a few more weeks of talks about this stuff to talk about. But if this is speaking to you and you want to get some help, reach out to me. Message me over social media. I'll put some links in the comments you can check out because this can be a challenging time of year, I know. But I'm I want to make sure that you get the understanding you can get the help you need. And I can definitely provide tools, steps, keys, guidance, counseling, all sorts of things to help you navigate through this month easily into the new year with even more grace and ease. So there will be a couple of links in the comments. I know I'm definitely going to put a link in the comments for my self-love meditation because it's a reminder that's one thing you can practice every day easily. It reinforces your relationship with yourself and gives you your power back. Not that you really lost it, but it's helping you remember you had the power in the first place. So my self-love meditation will help you with that. Um, I'll also, I'll put a link in the comments for the ladies about love and relationship stuff if you've got challenges with that because you may want to get some help on that. So I'll put the link in the comments for a conversation. And again, if this is resonating for you specifically and you want to get some guidance, message me. Send me a message over social media, uh, DM, whatever, and let me know you want some help. And I'll get back to you right away. This is a year of time. This is a time of year where it can be a lot of fun, lots of lights, lots of joy. But for a lot of people, it's a time where they want to hide out and they want to shut down. Don't feel like you're going to keep performing to be full of light, full of joy, unless it's natural for you. And if it's not natural, you're feeling like you need some help with that, that's from here to help. So be willing, as I said every time about taking care of yourself, be willing to put yourself first in all situations this month and through the holidays and into the new year and for the rest of your life for that matter. Put yourself first. That's one of the things I have to keep learning and teaching. And it's not about, um, um, what's the word looking for? It's really about respecting and appreciating yourself and remembering who you are and being the first to love yourself truly because nobody else can as much as you can love yourself and nobody can do it until you love yourself. But it's not a place of um, showing off or any of that sort of stuff. It's about really being honorable with yourself, keeping your agreements, making the right choices, saying no to things that don't fit, letting go of relationships that don't work and saying true to your heart, true to your values, true to what you want. That's how you never get through life in a healthy way and that's my reminder to you in this talk to really put yourself first. The holidays can be an interesting time, definitely. They can be distressing, they can be upsetting, they can be fun, they can be joyful, but sometimes they can feel like they're gonna knock you sideways. So being centered is like being independent of the waves on the ocean. You can be still and present with yourself. And that you can have easily when you know how to do it right. So again, I'll put links in the comments you can check out. I'll let you know, oh, replays, I'll tell you about that too. This is, um, this is an interesting point time to navigate, as I mentioned, but I've done a lot of talks before about love and relationships, about being in integrity, about supporting yourself, about self-love, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm gonna tell you when you find the replay so you can watch them. Um, this is my daily Facebook Live. I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here on my personal page on Facebook. So you can join me anytime you want, which is facebook.com slash Barry Selby, 5 p.m. Pacific time, every day of the week. It does sometimes move time-wise, but it's always the same day. It's always, it's always every day, I'm trying to say that clearly. You can watch the replays in two places. First of all, you can watch the replays on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. Um, that is most of the talks, not all the talks, because Facebook's not very good at showing them all. But I do have backups for every single broadcast. I put them onto my computer and then put them onto YouTube, so you've got a backup there, so you can go watch them online. If you go to my YouTube channel, which is um, youtube.com slash user slash barryselby, please subscribe to my channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. You can watch any of the broadcasts you want. You can scan through by keywords and search for the ones you want. My invitation is to make sure you get the support you need. My invitation is to reach out and get help. 
My intention is to make sure you understand that you have power, autonomy, and the freedom to love yourself and to be aligned to your true values going forward. Take advantage of that. I will talk to you soon, definitely. I'll talk to you again tomorrow if you're watching my broadcast. I do invite you to reach out if you want to get help. Again, comments, links will be in the comments. And as always, please, take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon. Bye.